going to talk about now is communication and conflict resolution skills. And how to deeper our relationships with, uh, deepen our relationships with our kids. Uh, communication skills. What are the positive things that come to your mind about when you hear the word communication? There, just call them out. Talking. Sharing in what? Sharing information. Deepening relationships. Listening. Listening. Sorry. Smiling. Oh, smiling. Yeah. So nonverbal kind of communication. Yeah. Camaraderie. Camaraderie. Yeah. Understanding. Good. Body language. Body language. Usually important. Yeah. Building. 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 Building what? Really, Brian? Wow, boy, you've seen some of the slides. <laughs> writing. Writing? Yeah, communication through writing, sure. Good. Exploration. Exploration. <coughs> what are some negative things that come to your mind when you hear the word communication? Instruction? Destruction. Destruction. In other words, breaking down. If you're not careful, communication can be destroyed. Oh, sure. What else? Ineffective. Yeah, sometimes effective, sometimes it's not. It's ineffective, sure. Yelling? Doesn't that work, yelling? <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Vulnerability. Vulnerability? Uh -huh. Vulnerability a good thing or a bad thing? So are you a pessimist or an optimist? <laughs> when, you, when yesterday you said vulnerability was a good thing? It is. <laughs> I just did. <laughs> All right, what else? A couple other negative things about communication? It's not the ultimate problem solver. Not the ultimate problem solver. Good. Any others? Never done. Never done? Continuous process. Continuous, yeah. Never, I'll tell you, man, never it's done like, meaning people don't do it. It's like yeah, it's, the laundry. You know? <laughs> it, it, well, that's exactly, I mean, it's, you know, it's a process. You know, we don't like process. We like, you know, one and done kind of stuff. And communication is a process. And that's, we like things that have a beginning and have an end. Laundry doesn't have a beginning and an end. It's a hard thing. It's, you know, my wife, you know, boy, it just never ends. It never stops. And she can't just be pleased with, ah, oh, it's done for today. <laughs> and take each day as it comes. Quick and hard time. Go there. <laughs> well, we'll get to conflict resolution skills towards the end. <laughs> All right, so effective communication. Um, it's mandatory for healthy relationships. Mandatory for healthy relationships. Okay. Taking information in and then sending information out. So, um, you know, somebody mentioned listening. It's going to be about listening and then sending information out. Taking information in that's inside us. You know, especially for teenagers, but even with adults, it takes many positive communications uh, to outweigh one negative. You know, they've done studies, and it's about between six and twelve positive comments that it takes to undo or to cancel out a negative comment. And you know, you can. Some preacher once said it like this: Our heart is Velcro to the negative, and it's Teflon to the positive. You know, it's just due to our sin nature, our inadequacies, our insecurities. Negative comments just stick to us a lot easier than the positive ones do. So it takes a lot of positive comments. So even though with your kids you think, well, you know, I, I told them some negative things, and you know, I told them a couple of positive things, they equaled out. Well, not in the kids' mind. You know, if you told them two negative things, well, you need 24 positive things, so you're still down 22. You got to really pound away at it. It sounds like you're being redundant. Some, sometimes it sounds like you're being patronizing. Like, well, I've told them this a bunch of times. You're going to think I'm just saying it just to say it. You know, but as we talked about yesterday, kids listen, and they listen a lot. They're hearing what you're saying, both in your nonverbal, we talked about nonverbal communication, and your verbal communication. So it takes a lot of positive communications to outweigh a negative one. 
as we talked about before, it requires the ability to manage our emotions for objectivity. So as we're communicating, to be able to communicate and to receive communication, we need to have a real good handle on our emotions, just like that quarterback analogy for him to really take in, you know, what the coach was saying. We need to be able to bring his emotional volume down, be able to take that information in. Communication requires a good, healthy attitude. Healthy attitude about communication and about life in general. Motivated by desire, we really have to want to communicate. Communication doesn't really come. You know, we have this sin nature that wants to be me, wants to be independent, wants to be on our own. You know, to be able to relate and to communicate isn't something that's a natural uh, yearning for us. Um, so motivation to communicate is, uh, uh, or desire to communicate um, is really necessary. As we talk about, it takes time. You know, it's uh, never done. Uh, it takes time. It takes time to formulate our own thoughts. It takes time to listen. You know, in this society that we're in, things are hectic, fast-paced, quick, 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 on the go. You know, communication gets really, you know, circumvented. So it's, you know, let's leave a bullet list here. Let's leave a note there. Uh, let's just say something real quick on the way out the door. But we then wonder why there was a miscommunication and we're on different pages. You know, whenever the task doesn't get done, the chore doesn't get done. Um, you know, laundry doesn't get done. Now, first and foremost, um, you got to be a good communicator with yourself. I've been to a lot of communication classes, and they talk about how to communicate with others, but I really think that you need to learn how to be a good communicator with yourself. If you can't really communicate with yourself very well, it's going to be very hard for you to communicate with others and receive information from others in a, in a healthy way. So you got to be a real good communicator, and that's that steer process that we went through. You know, being able to really communicate and understand what really is going on inside you, what is at the center of your heart. Why are you making the decisions you're making? What are the lenses that you're seeing life through? What is important to you? What are your priorities? What does drive you? What is irritating you about somebody? What is <coughs> beneficial to you about somebody? What are, who are people or things that you want to engage with and you need to communicate that in some way? And certainly being able to have, you know, emotional control uh, so you can think through things that you, uh, and understand them as well as to understand what your warning system is doing or what you're being warned about. Is important to be able to be a good communicator. You know, in negotiation, um, you know, I think of everything as a negotiation. Negotiation to me is really trying to help somebody get to a certain goal. And if you're trying to negotiate with, a, with uh, uh, an agenda to get somebody to a certain goal, now negotiation oftentimes has a has a bad connotation, or manipulation has a bad connotation. But we're really trying to get somebody to a certain goal. Now, hopefully we're trying to get them to a goal that helps them become more Christ-like and helps us become more Christ-like in that process. But we're really trying to get them to a certain goal. When you're in a negotiation, the things you're taught in negotiation is to not give information about yourself. You know, to keep your, you know, your side, what you want out of this situation, you, you know, you, you hold that back. You're trying to get information out of them so that you can hopefully better manipulate them and, and uh, better get you know, the right situation that you want out of it. But it's amazing how when we're in these negotiations with our kids, with our spouse, with other people, how we just want to give information right off the bat. We just want to, you know, dictate, tell them exactly what we want, exactly what we're doing, you know, put it right out there um, without listening to the other side first. Um, so part of being an effective communicator, as somebody said, is listening. Being able to listen and hear, to resist that natural tendency to jump in and to start to spew the things that you know and the things that you want and, and your agenda in the process and where you want them to be, it's hard for us to have that self-control over that urge and then to have the patience to listen in that process. Now these are 12 communication roadblocks. They're, you know, they're not anything that you really need to know, but just sort of examples. Uh, directing, you know, you must be home by 5 p.m. Uh, you'd better do that or I'll be furious. You should do this. Advising, do it this way instead. Persuading with logic, judging, criticizing, even praising, evaluating positively. You're so competent, you're so good. Name calling, interpreting, analysis, and anal analyzing, reassuring, sympathizing. So, how are these things roadblocks? I mean, some of them sound like they're definitely roadblocks, you know, when you're judging somebody, but some of them sound like nice things to say to people. You know, they have a situation, and you see, why are these things roadblocks? 